Good evening, Atlanta, and everyone watching from home. You are tuned into Dream Hack Fighters, and it is time for some DNF Duel. My name is King Jobber, joined by the always lovely Yajin. How are you doing, Yajin? I am doing fantastic. This has been such a crazy weekend for fighting games, and we are here now with top four. DNF Duel, we have some amazing matches lined up. Uh, so far on the winner's side, we're going to have Tega versus Joel. Oh, and on the loser one. side, we have Taco versus Ten Tidal Wave. So two very strong players. Actually, the thing is, Taika actually beat Taco, who's on loser side, to move on yeah. to the top four, winner's side. All right, that's that's a pretty big upset there as well, right? Yeah, no, the thing, Taco's a very strong player, but I really think Taika has been one of those players who's been pushing that meta of Ghost Blade. So this is actually an interesting choice here for Zerker on Taika's side. I think Berserker can fight Striker incredibly well. You know, having very explosive offense, any hit will lead to the corner, and you can go into the loops off of the Frenzy cancels. Yeah, I'm just really surprised. I don't know if I've the seen Tega actually bring out the Berserker here, so this is going to be long. exciting to see. Fight. Starting off our very first match here of Top 4. Tega starts off on the offensive. Early guard cancel. Joel trying to take some space, but there we go. Getting the first open up here on Tega, and there we go. Frenzy still on. Goes for the Super Plus Vortex. Yeah, really interesting decision there, but now Joel trying to establish some pressure. A beautiful poke out there with the 2A from Tega. Sets up the Gorkrof. Oh, and the jump back dive kick. Joel's gonna go into a great setup afterwards here. We'll see if they bait out that DP, save jump, or potentially even just go for a dive kick or throw mix up. Oh, oh, there it is! Trying to go for the throw, but Tega answers with one of his own. There's the Gore-Tex, has plenty of time to get that confirmed after the cancel. Yep, and get that frenzy, unfrenzy. Look at this damage, and there we go. The awakening damage. He got that dog in him. And that is going to be the very first round here. Wrapped up. So far, this Berserker choice working out incredibly well. Round two. Now we'll see again if Joel, yeah, just trying to get some space. They're both backdashing at the beginning of the round. I like that Tega is actually backdashing just to go into the frenzy state to be even more dangerous right off the bat. Joel, unfortunately, giving up a little too much room when you should be going in and starting to establish the pressure. Nice, getting the cancel off the blood orb. We're going to keep it going here. Into the converge, we can do it maybe one more time. Will we push into Awakening? I don't think we have enough bar for that. No, unfortunately, Tega did not bleed themselves so far enough. And there is the dive kick. Look at the damage that's coming through. Joel should be able to close this out with the per correct routing. Yep, by the MOTG. Shoulder one inch punch into the Awakening and firing right back with an Awakening of their own. I love these two groups. They're so sick. Yeah, I honestly never get tired of seeing them. Here we go, trying to take that coveted first round here. The first person to get the lead, a really great press there from Tega, immediately going into Frenzy once again. Yep, those great Frenzy combos do so much damage, and they waste so much time, giving time for MP to recover during the combo, but a little bit too far for the 5A, and Tega picking it right back up. Let's see how many loops you can get. Actually only goes for the one there, tries to set up the gore cost. Joel able to escape the corner with the dive kick, coast to coast time. He's gonna get a bit more damage. Will he push into the awakening here? The Tatsu. There we go. Has that regenerative ability and the DP. Oh, and the shoulder check. That's gonna be all she wrote for game number one. Yeah, Joel really making the best of that. We'll see if a change from Tega will come out here. No, we're just gonna jump straight into it. Game number two. Round start situation, take him once again, backing off a little bit, but Joel establishing that pressure even without the mana. Oh my gosh, the pressure here in the corner, relentless, nice guard cancel, take him! Oh, the, the dive kick right over that 5B swing. That dive kick has really been the best tool for Joel so far, getting him out of a lot of sticky situations, especially those corner situations, and winning out in neutral. Just knocking on the door here with this pressure, the guard bar looking mighty low. Oh, the dive kick, unfortunately, this time putting him in the corner, but that doesn't matter when you have the shoulder check. What a confirm there from Tega. Let's see how many loops we can get in this. Only goes for the one yet again. Yeah, you have to be a little bit more careful on the lower health, so can't go for the loop as much. Every loop, you lose conversion. Not gonna be able to kill here, but it is a dangerous situation. There comes the dive kick, goes for a second one, delayed this time. Yeah, it's so tough to kind of deal with that pressure, that timing. You want to tech throw so bad. Go so, a 
again. Joel going to work. It has not been a good sign here for Tega in the corner. Joel's really been opening up the defense. Another grab. Gets that dash punch into the slide, keeping the pressure on the dive kick, catching Tega, pressing. Look at all that white life about to be deleted there. All right, again, not enough, just on a pixel. Double overhead, nice tech, a chance here for Tega. It's not over till it's over, especially when it comes to Berserker. Berserker's special skill in Awakening is you can see any time he lands a hit, he is going to gain a little bit of health back. So we could potentially see here, Tega getting a lot of health back, baits out the guard cancels, be so oh, much damage. That's dead, you're dead! Hold up, wait a minute, one more loop. Just extending so far right now, just trying to go for that Twitter clip. There we go, the awakening, what a comeback from Tega. Like a truck berserker coming through. There we go, tying up the rounds here. Yeah, I like seeing a little bit more fight here from Tega. Joel really has been kind of running the show once they put him in the corner. Rushing down into the corner, catches Tega pressing once again. Ooh, I actually like that extension there. Joel's content to really just spend all of the mana to squeeze out every little bit of damage he possibly can. Able to get the whip punish with the dive kick. Like I said, Yeijin, this dive kick has been doing so much work so far in the set. Yeah, I really think the big thing here is Tega expected to kind of be able to anti-air with swinging with 5B or 5A, but Joel is spacing out these dive kicks so well out of the range of that. Oh, nice, the Ray Frenzy. All right, Sent bounced up against the wall. Goes for the Gore Cross setup this time. Oh my oh. god, the grab! But the back throw, and you can see Tegu was like, wait, hold on, how did that happen there? Definitely a miss input, something they wanted to put in after the conversion, it just didn't come out. I think that could potentially have been a hard kind of bait on the DP. And then just Joel was like, if you're not gonna do anything, I'm going to grab. Yeah, I mean, Really unfortunate, but we're going back to character select. Is Tega possibly thinking about making the switch to Ghostblade? I would like to see that. You know, I understand that on paper, Berserker has a better matchup against Striker, but you kind of have to go for the comfort pick. Tega is very well known for that GB. We have to see. Tega is tapping the chin, thinking about it. It looks like we're going to stick it out with Berserker all the way through, possibly. No, there. Oh. oh, you can see the gritting of the teeth. Do I do it? No, nope, it's oh, going to good. opt to go with Berserker. I respect the decision to stick to your guns all the way through. Yeah, but there is a bit of a hill to climb here for Tega. Yeah, a 3 0 comeback is what Tega is going to need to move on to the grand finals winner's side. And Joel really has been showing just mastery of Striker nowadays. It's been really interesting seeing how players are adjusting to their characters being changed and really being able to kind of run the same mix they were doing before, just kind of adapting for the changes. Oh, and once again gets hit by that staggered pressure of the shoulder charge. Finally, a guard cancel comes out. The roll to escape the corner. Beautiful movement here so far from Tega. All right, there we go. Going for the loops here off conversion. But the thing is, Joel does have a lot more health than Tega here, so potentially if this does not kill, it might be a bad time for Tega. Oh, but there comes the low. Tega putting in the work. Joel is finally in the awakening state, but it's too little too late. Here comes the super. Yeah, and again, I cannot talk about this enough. Berserker really is at high risk, high reward character you know if things go sideways and you're at low health it is not a good time for you but Tega cleaning it up there in that corner and that's the thing is that Berserker puts himself into low health as he is winning right so like you said definitely feast in famine oh big swing with that 2B set up the gore cross but nothing off of it goes for the Gore-Tex this time catches catches Joel trying to jump out now all that white health got deleted jobber <laughs> Already put into Awakening here. That does mean that Joel is going to have increased damage on their moves. Look at this, sending all the way to the other corner. 
hole. <laughs> the swing again on the 6 as there is a gap in that block strike. And nice hitting with the Gore-Tex. Tega getting one on the board. And sometimes a little bit of a cool off in character select is all you need, right? That was the most dominating round they have had against Joel so far. Again, just being very patient, just swinging with the 2B, fighting that spacing so incredibly well here for Tega. All right, but there's the guard cancel out, chasing down and catchy. Tega possibly trying to backdash in that situation here. Gets rid of the white life. Yup, just getting the knockdown here in the corner. The grab is good. Tega pushed into awakening, instant DP. Well, this is where things can get scary. Tega really needs one solid hit. And that's the one hit, but drops the confirm. So unfortunate. Yeah, it's going to be tough getting this hit here again. Going back into Frenzy. Trying to get a little bit more options here. Nooch with the run up from Joel. Oh, and there it is. The low crush in that dive kick. So good at these whip punishes with that move here. And we are in set point now for Joel. Yeah, and he's in the corner. No, the counter hit off the 5M frame trap. And look at that health bar, Yasian. I could have sworn they were at full health five seconds ago. And the harassment with the dive kick. Joel is saying, do you have an answer for it? Because I'm going to keep doing it. Right, trying to run up, getting something started here with the 5B. But the frenzy health ticking down. The conversion again fades out the guard cancel. Let's see how much damage we can squeeze out here. Once again, dropping the confirm. So unfortunate. But Joel is going to take it 3-1 here over Tega and move on to Grand Finals winner's side. That was an amazingly well-fought match from Tega. You know, wanted to take the Berserker all the way through, but I think Joel really was ready. Yeah, I mean, definitely knew how to play that matchup. Did such a good job at locking down Tega in the corner. And I know we mentioned it so many times mm -hmm. during that match, but my god, the dive kick. The dive yeah. kick was really just the number one tool that was blowing Tega up. Consistently getting whiff punish, consistently getting counter hit too, whether it be in the corner or mid-screen. Yeah, because a lot of the times when you see Striker versus Berserker, uh, Strikers really like to go for that instant air dive kick where it is kind of lower to the ground. Mm -hmm. And Berserker can swing with 5A or 5B. So that was kind of a really big key moment in that matchup where these dive kicks were spaced out almost perfectly every time. Yeah, every single time getting massive reward off of them as well. But now we're going to have to go and see Taco versus Hentidal Wave coming up. Yeah, Taco, a very well accomplished troubleshooter player and Hentidal Wave, another good Dragonite. Yeah, and Dragonite, a character that is only getting better and better as time goes mm -hmm. on in DNF Duel. Just the amount of pressure and damage that she can dish out is insane, especially with the spinning move from Astra in the corner, right? Th these characters are so terrifying in the corner. I feel like more so than most characters in other fighting games. Yeah, and the thing is with Dragonite, it really is just Astra putting in all of that damage in. You know, the pet dragon really just feels unscaled. Anytime Astra's in the combo, you know what's going to hurt. Yeah, and how many loops you can get on it as well, unbelievable. This is a disgusting character. Yeah, uh, you haven't seen really too many troubleshooters lately. I feel like they kind of fell off um, out, out of favor, at least for the top five. You know, troubleshooter was very strong initially. Um, they had really good mid-range options, access to big damage. But I think kind of that slower startup and recovery on their moves, where if you whiff one thing and people are playing clean, you're losing half your health for whiffing 2A. I feel like most troubleshooter players either opted to switch to Hitman mm -hmm. or switch to Ranger, right? Two characters that, have, that are similar in aesthetic, but a little bit higher on the tier list and can put in a little bit more work. Not to say that troubleshooter is not good. I still believe in my heart of hearts that he is an incredible character and has some of the best set play in the game. But you know, those other two characters are just a lot more consistent. That's why you see them in top eight all over the world. Yeah, uh, Troubleshooter, uh, one of those characters, just like Berserker, who makes really good use of conversion, able to put themselves in conversion with the drink off the 4S. Yep, just that quickie sippy there. It's just about finding the opportunity to squeeze it in, usually within combos. Here we go, Troubleshooter versus Dragon Knight. 
First, we're going to get that button check. And one thing I feel like is going to be a little bit of an equalizer in this matchup is Troubleshooter does have access to that grenade, right? It is not like Ranger's grenade where it actually lands and it's a set play tool. The moment that it hits something, it explodes. Mm -hmm. So you're probably going to see a lot of fade back grenades. I would imagine that. It's just a way to get out of the face of Dragonite, right? And it will hit her if she tries to go for the air fireball as well. Yeah, what? so that... <laughs> All right, the player is having a little bit of fun here on the stage here, seeing who, how fast He's you drinking. crouch. All right, there's the thumbs up. Both players smiling as well here. Yeah, I think the crazy thing here is, you know, 10th Tidal Wave to get into top four here had to beat Lupro 3-2. Wow. Another amazing Dragonite. One of the best out there, yeah. honestly. Yeah, Hen Tidal Wave definitely made name, a, a name for themselves at Siotaku, where they took out Diaphone in top 48. I, I still remember the pop. I said, what's my name? <laughs> That's it, it, crazy. Or, or it was like, say my name. It, it was amazing. It, it was an amazing pop off. Oh, he knows about his name. Oh, yeah. We, we don't have to mention He knows about his name. <laughs> but here we go. Taco versus Hen Tidal Wave. I'm excited to see some troubleshooter action here in top four of DNF Duel. All right, round start situation is getting very important. 2S is a very, excuse me, 2B is a very popular round starter. But it's actually going to go for the 5A instead, or 5B. Oh my god, instantly into the gauntlet here. Going to set up that Astro play. Nice, he's in the guard button there. Great blocks here from Taco. The 5B again, though, trying to go for that Rekka series. Gets the big jump in. And the Helmbreaker, we're going to get some loops now, brother. Yeah, we get a lot of damage here, igniting the mine. Gonna push a little further. No, interesting setup here. It's gonna work out though. Of course, remember that that drink does give you increased damage. And again, are we going back into it? That is a oh, the whip jump A, but a little bit too high for that. Dragonite is a shorter character. But now Taco is sitting in Awakening, which means that his moves are going to have different properties here. If he gets a chance to use them, and Tidal Wave setting out Astra, getting this pressure on. Astra swinging through, pushes so far back in Awakening. And we're down to the final hit pretty much for both players here. Oh my gosh, again, wow. too far. Trying to punish with a baseball bat swing and the throw is no. no. Unbelievable, but the baseball swing will do it there and hence Hollow Wave is going to take the first round. Taco throwing in those two A's in between each one of fire Astra's fireballs was actually really impressive. Can we talk about that jump A grenade <laughs> conversion here from Taco? So clean into the corner, into the mine setup. Again, drink it up. Explosion. No, I love the patience for Van Tidal Wave. And that grenade will blow up Astra as well. It is a really good just get off me button, but a beautiful roll there from Hen Tidal Wave gonna change the pace of this matchup real quick. Oh nice. And going for the loops here off the floor as look at this damage! Oh, the open up low, running up with the stagger 2A again, right back into these S loops here with Astra. And look at the damage that's coming out. There is the Godric grab coming through, leading to a safe jump. Oh, actually trying to safe jump that, trying to whip with that jump A. Nice, because the tip can pick up afterwards with the awakening passive here. Uh oh. What time is it, Yasian? It's time to have a good time. That's the best super in the game. I'm sorry. And there we go from the clutches of the feet. Taco making quite a comeback there. Yeah, for sure. And that is something that is very good for Troubleshooter. It is that comeback potential, especially when in Awakening. Oh, tries to go for that 4S cross up. No, go. The DP comes out. Oh, gets the baseball swing as well. And Tidal Wave is noticing that Taco is overextending a little bit, trying to get rid of Astra in these situations here. Oh, actually got him to go for the grab, but no go here. A little bit of misconnections here on both of those setups. And we'll get that full screen hard knockdown. Again, landing it. Look at the amount of damage that comes out. Yeah, just that damage buff off that 4S, the DP through for Hen Tidal Wave, trying to put out the Astra, but no, gets swatted away by Taco. And the DP is going to land here. Taco is going to go up 1-0. Can you believe that was only the first game? 
Ooh, they are really playing against these characters really well. The, one of the big things, Taco, making sure that Dragon that cannot leave the ground. We're seeing a lot of anti airs with that 5B, with that 2S, with that DP. Oh, here we go, getting a nice confirm off of the fly conversion. Godra grab once again. Oh, almost oh. went for a bait there. That could have been scary. And using that Godra grab there as just a way to advance with the conversion. Great DP reaching so far. Yeah, insane whiff punish. Just trying to keep this momentum going. Pushing Taco into the corner and the 2B whiff punish on the whiffed 5S. Has to block some of this pressure coming out. Asher out again there. Is able to actually hit Taco, but Hentai Wave doesn't get anything started. And just oh. the run of 5A. Not going to be enough to do afterwards. it. There yep. it is. No, no, it's not enough. Oh, boy. Astra coming in clutch. You get the freeze frame. Yeah, I like the idea of going for the Helmbringer, but unfortunately, Astra will still come out there. Again, a lot of staggering with this 2A, just trying to bait Taco out to press something. Yeah, Taco was fighting a lot of success in just going for these anti-airs. But there we go, Taco leading into the corner, has the meter for the mines, exploding it, gonna extend a little bit further. Nice avoidance there. Oh, with the 5A check, this time from Taco, gets the run up throw, and that's gonna be enough to close out the round. Yeah, been so back and forth here, but Taco, Really looks like they know the matchup incredibly well. Ooh, again, Get throw this time. Faith. For forcing their way in with that Godra grab. Oh, <laughs> Astra once again coming in from behind. There we go, Forefathers bear witness of this safe jump. Oh, tried to swing out, but still, look at that mix. Did you even see where Dragonite was? I did not. <laughs> I got hit. That's all I'll say. I'm still trying to process it here. But goes straight into the grab once again. Should be another safe jump coming. Goes for the fake overhead into the grab and catches the attempt at jumping. All right. Yeah, that old wave definitely feeling that match right there. Oh, wow. 5S right into that baseball swing. The jump A air to air. We're getting real creative on making Dragonite stay on the ground. All right, there's the quickie sippy, gets the 5B and the confirm into the Helmbreaker. Interesting choice there to actually go the, for the conversion just so you could get another drink. And you get real creative with these setups here, though, and the DP right through the 2S attempt there. Oh no. The sandwich, great defense from Taco. Oh, and there we go. Big enough one gets yep. the 2B cashing out with that 6M and Taco playing that slow game, trying to make sure they don't get out of that corner. Starting off with the 5B again and reaching out with the 2B. Troubleshooter definitely has the range advantage here. Not when you are using that baseball swing, though. Oh, nice catch. Almost gets the full combo, but both of them swinging right there. Getting kind of scary. 6M and the conversion. A lot of damage about to come out here. Yeah, just that conversion on the fly. Very freeform combo. Run straight through Asher, but you have to watch out for the fireball, and there it is. Run up throw. Now Troubleshooter is in Awaken. You have to be careful for that DP. That was actually so crazy how far behind Taka was. Astra throwing that fireball still, making him block a 6M. Can we reach it? Yes, you can. That does. When Troubleshooter is in Awakening, the Shotgun Blast actually does a wall bounce, allowing him to pick up with the Helmbreaker. And once again, sent to have a good time. Yeah, one of those characters people say having one of the best Awakening passives, uh, probably behind Hitman's. Yes, I 100% agree. Just changing the properties in so many unique ways, making the DP so difficult to punish because of how far it pushes you out, and giving you basically a full screen confirm into a full combo crazy. And very clean stuff here. Just using the mine in neutral now. Oh, this is going to be huge. Oh, no. Oh, no. You Jobber. might be dead. We will see, Jobber, if they have enough MP to make it go all the way here. 
Oh no, they're gonna stop it short, sure, but still able to take it anyway. That is one of the highest damage starters in the entire game there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to make sure that your DPs are not blocked here. That 4M conversion is disgusting. You see Taco getting a little greedy as well with the 4M. Blows straight through the explosion with the grab. Oh my gosh, just stays low. And that's conditioning right there. They've gone high almost every time off that Astra S follow-up. Not going to be enough to kill, but sends out Astro to keep the pressure on. And there it is. Hen Tidal Wave staying alive for another round, but Taco still sitting at set point. Yeah, really good stagger pressure there, and Taco opening up with that 6M, just trying to keep away. Oh, able to stuff out Astro there, but still locked down in the corner. There's a beautiful 2A, gets the Helm Breaker. Let's see how far we're going to decide to carry this. Yeah, just going for the drink here. Oh, I actually love that option. They've been noticing that Hentidal Wave has been going just for the roll on that setup. Gets another drink as well, but jumps straight into the DP. 2A is going to land an Astra, actually saving Hentidal Wave's life here, their tournament life. Yeah, there's a huge chance here. Gets the DP anti-air. Astra's out, swing. Oh, I love that 5B. The run up throw, time to get something started. Down to the wire, the DP lands, and Hen Tidal Wave is going to take this to a game five, all thanks to Astra acting as a combo breaker. Astra is the biggest homie. <laughs> if no one got me, I know Astra got me. Can I get an amen, chat? Amen, and there we go. Still, no punish off that DP. But the amount of damage that is coming through from this confirm goes for the 2B and allows Hentidal Wave to tech out. Oh. Wow, the 2S gets stuffed out by that jump B, and there we go. Corner to corner we go. Bit of a miss there. And now, oh, that 5S has been catching so many jumps! And there it is. Once again, Taco sitting at set point here, threatening to eliminate Hentidal Wave from the entire tournament in this loser semis. And there we go, that round start to be there. Oh, and just going for that DP, I actually love that option there to kind of make sure nothing reaches their side of the screen and just running up the conversion <laughs> after the whiffed Helmbreaker. Just to keep himself safe, is able to actually kind of act as a mix up there. Oh, oh. and the double overhead, this might be a jobber. Are we gonna cash it out? Do we have enough damage here? I think it's going to be maybe a little too much scaling on the combo to get it all the way. Instead, goes for the drink, but the 2A press will do it. Ooh. Right, good stuff to both players. I wasn't sure how the interaction was going to go. There was a bit, little bit of hesitancy there. You saw him put up the fist, and maybe couldn't see the other side of the screen. I was like, uh-oh. But no, all smiles there from both players. Really well played down to the wire match. And that means we're going to be moving on to our losers final set here at DreamHack for DNF Duel. This game has been such a joy to just pick up and play. If you are a fan of more old school fighting games, and if you're a fan of aiding fighting games, definitely make sure to check out DNF Duel because it'll be right up your alley. Yeah, it really has been crazy as a uh, Dungeon Fighter player from the beginning, finally seeing a game that you played in your childhood become a fighting game. Like, I feel like I've been dreaming about a fighting game of this for so long. Even though the game is a bit of a, you know, a beat-em-up, just mm -hmm. being in that kind of 2D plane makes it so much more different. Because, you know, the game itself is on that Z-axis. Yeah. Because it is kind of like more of like, you know, Final Fight, something like that. So it, it's been so cool seeing where Aiding has kind of taken this game and next on for like putting in all of the work to get this game out there. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, too, for this game to get a fighting game, right? Everyone I've talked to that has played DFO has basically just said, yeah, it's just a fighting game MMO. Exactly. Basically. You do combos just like in a fighting game. It's 2D. You level up your character. It makes perfect sense. And from what I've heard from people like you who have played both, it is incredibly faithful to the characters as well. Yeah, it really is. I almost thought there was going to be something like, you know, the quick stand system that they have in the game in the PvP, but, you know, maybe in the future, I'm going to see what changes yeah. they will kind of bring in that December patch. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Speaking of that December patch, 
all buffs is what the developer said. Going to focus on all buffs. Now, what could that mean for some of the characters in the cast? Let's hope they get tiny buffs compared to some others, right? I don't think we. I don't think anyone wants to see giant buffs for Hitman Swiftmaster. Honestly, you know, for buffs, I just want to see Grappler just get better framed in. I think all of the tools that Grappler has. Um, they, they call it specific things. If they were just slightly faster, I think that Grappler would be a really good character. But, you know, as we've seen time and time again, people do not enjoy Grapplers. I mean, have you watched any recent online tournaments? Uh, we got to see some crazy Grappler play just Thursday before we got here mm -hmm. to Dallas. Uh, excuse me, to Atlanta. I'm already stuck to the other dream hack now. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah, Grappler is definitely a polarizing character. I think it, they seemed very strong earlier on. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't know what the options were. People were getting blown up by, you know, charged fling or the command grab or that charged jump S. They had a lot yeah. of options that seemed very strong, um, you know, on paper. But the fact that a lot of their armor is blown up by lows, and That's a lot of characters have really good lows in this game and chainable, um, you know, Grappler might not seem that good when you put in the whole roster's kits in mind. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of the whole roster, hopefully down the line we can get some more characters as well. DFO is definitely full of an amazing, colorful cast of characters. And I want to know for all of you watching at home, who are you most interested in to end up in this game? I know I definitely want to see Monk. If we get any character, Monk is definitely one I want to see. A character that would remind me of, from the way you describe him, like Kotal Khan. Yeah. Right? Being able to summon the totems, get, get different kinds of buffs. That seems like a really fun play style. How about you, Yasha? You're kind of just, I mean, for, for the Monk, you're kind of just ducking and weaving. You know, you, you, you put the totem down, and then you just kind of, you kind of duck around, and you use your shadow clones to, like, beat up monsters. But my pick would have to be Exorcist. It's been a character I've played since the beginning. You know, physical and magical Exorcist. But I play physical because they pretty much use a giant axe and then swing it across the, the map. And it's very exciting gameplay. But, you know, there's a lot of different characters in DFO that could be translated really well into a fighting game format. So I'm just so excited for the future of this game, DNF Duel. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like we are going to be getting into our losers finals now. Both of our players on the stage getting ready to jump into this button check. So how do you feel about this matchup, Yeji, coming up? I think it is going to be a bit rough. It, I mean, it is two characters that, you know, people would say are pretty good. They're not top tier, but they're pretty good. Even though I am definitely a Ghost Blade enjoyer, I would say that they're almost at that precipice of the top tier. But um, there is options. Troubleshooter has that crazy horizontal DP, covers so much range, can even be used as a whiff punish. Yeah, absolutely. That will be one of the deciding factors of this matchup. But we're going to have to see how they're actually going to establish that. Of course, first we are going to get the button check here. I feel like Ghostplay is going to be really good at actually with punishing Troubleshooter, right? That's going to be one of the big aspects, because as good as Troubleshooter is, look at the recovery on this. You can just see in the button check, so a lot of his moves have substantial recovery on whip, meaning that that teleport slash is going to be a lifesaver here for Tega. Yeah, so we'll see how this turns out here. I want to see if there will be kind of like a uh, going to contest each other at that 99 seconds. Because they both have sizable 5Bs, but I do think that Ghostly can RPS with that 5A. It has a lot of range on it, and it is on the faster side. Yeah, well, we're about to find out right now, aren't we? Our loser's finals match. <laughs> he swung it out the 5A. He just... It has a bit of range. Luckily, no buttons pressed here on Taco's side. Oh, but there is that clean jump in. So much hit stun on these jump in normals. All right, we're going to take a drink, go for a bit of set play here. I don't, wow, I don't even think that he was ready for that explosion to actually land. But now, Tega going to lock down Taco in the corner, and here comes this Ghost Blade mix again we've been talking so much about. Yeah, just looping it here in the corner. We have that jump B right into the Ghost Mix. There we go, keeping them locked down in the corner. Big poke out from Taco. Get the explosion off of the net as well. This time we're going to go for the drink. I love the patience here. The conversion with the grenade. Teleported behind, but no go. Pega being incredibly patient. Summons the ghost, trying to establish some pressure. Oh, and oh, there the comes DP. the DP, finally. Instant poke out with that two-way. 5M, 5M, or success rather, into the awakening there. And that is going to be round number one here, going to Tega. 
Yeah, pretty explosive first round so far. But I want to see if there will be a little bit more disrespect from Taco and DPing through some of these block streams that are not gapless. I feel like part of the game plan of Troubleshooter, just look at him, is you have to be disrespectful, right? Yeah, getting that drink in, getting that damage buff, and getting a bit of white health to kind of work your neutral through. But no, the 2 and 4 M, the ghost keeps swinging. Goes for two hits of the Rekka there, just trying to push Tag out a little further. Yeah, no counter hits, so no crumble. They're off the 2S, and then there is that DP. It is such a good tool to kind of play in the mid range there against Ghostblade. Oh, tries to teleport out, but the JB is actually going to hit behind here. Taco getting a huge confirm. Yeah, a bit, a bit of an ugly little thing there. They missed the 5A, but picked it right back up with the Hellbreaker. Keeping it going here. They have the MP. No, just going to go for the drink instead. Oh, no. Take it gets out of the corner, but the throw back in will seal that round. Really solid stuff there from Taco so far. Oh, and the... 2C at round start? You know, sometimes you really got to do it to him. Oh, and again, huge pickup here in the corner with oh. the 2B whiffs. Yeah, that is a tight confirm there. The 2B does have kind of a wonky hitbox. It drops really easily. Oh, nice. The 6S stays on the same side here. Huge crumple. Oh, gets the OTG. And the side swap as well. Keep it taco locked down into the corner. Oh, wow. The jump A actually does whiff here. Nice patience. Oh, I love the fact that I'm not even bothering with the 6M. And there we go. Taco is actually going to be able to take game number one here in our loser's final set. Crack the knuckles? Yeah, definitely feeling it here. Playing the match incredibly well. Oh, and the patience there this time. No one pressing anything for the first couple seconds. Taco has been so on point with this 5B2, just setting it up as a wall. Tega pushing him slowly but surely to the corner. Under conversion, able to put them right back into the corner. I love Ooh. that 6S to get across. That's the nothing personal, kid. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, no way that was a whiff punish. A beautiful one at that. Gonna get a huge amount of damage here, putting Taco into the awakening state. Oh no, the mix, but they drop out. Wait a second. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen, Tega. Oh, the Rekkas. Nice. And again, that 6S getting the anti air. Again, just that 5B. The 5B has such a hard to tell range when you're running up against it, right? Just frame trapping off that 5A into the 2B here. And now the Ghost Pressure keeping it going here in the corner. The run up low is good. Combos into the Ghost, wants to get lit, rid of that gray health here. And gets the hard knockdown. Time for another mix up. What Whoa. even happened? Did he cross to the other side? I think so, Jobber. This is why we have a block button, Asia. <laughs> Indeed, but I think they were worrying about potentially the throw there or the low, but so much damage, not enough. Oh, but the back throw coming out here for Taco. Tries to go for another one. Tega is ready for it, though, and gets the 6S once again. Man, they are really sneaking in those 6S. Very, very cheeky stuff. Take a quick drink. Got to stay hydrated. Ghosts have to drink, too. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Ghosts, indeed, can be very thirsty, especially when they're trying to mix people with Ghost Blade. Oh, just a jump in there, trying to take the corner. Great challenge, though, from Tega. Oh, my gosh, the 2S. A lot of damage off the crumple. We've seen this time and time again. Ghostblade just does so much damage in the corner, and the setup pressure is so crazy. Great press out, though, from Taco. Going to get a ton of corner carry off of this one. Oh, no shot! Oh. No shot! I, Tega is laughing at that. <laughs> I respect that. You got me. You got me. Because I think the big thing there was Taco was looking for the roll. Didn't expect Taco to go for the roll. Yeah. Taco was just waiting. All right, there's the ghost. Tries to go for a little bit of a cross of his own. Swaps to the same side. 
Patience here. Cracking open with that 2 but just going for the drink instead. Oh, nice. Has the conversion with the mines, too. So much damage. Timed perfectly there with that bounce. So clean. What a routing. I don't think I've seen that routing before. Yeah, That's I was crazy. like, if this bounces off the grenade, that'd be so cool. And there we go. Conversion. Keeping the pressure going. The throw. One more chance here. Harassing with that grenade, and the 2A press is going to catch Tega here. Taco going up 2-1. And just going right back in. No change to Zerker. Tega just riding it out here with Ghostblade. Oh, the 2S, oh, the crumple. Look at this damage. Absolute destruction here, pushed all the way to the corner. Yeah, just a hearty 70% for trying to press a button in neutral. <laughs> yeah, you thought? That's footsies right there. And actually, goes for the restand here. A little bit too much hits done on that. Doesn't get the 2B and the bust out with the DP there. Setting up the ghost, but what a 5A press out there from Taco. Has time to get a drink in and get the Helm Breaker. We have a lot of bar here, could potentially gone for the OTG there, but that Helmbreaker did whiff. Back to neutral we go. Oh, the 2S. They thought they were going to swing right through, but they were ready. That was too greedy. See, Tega is starting to adapt, realize that Taco is swinging to get rid of the ghost, so making him pay for it. Yeah, so we'll see if there is a little bit more adaptations, because, you know, Ghostbusters can just leave intentional gaps in pressure to make you press, then they just punish you, as we've seen with that 2S. Yeah, there we go, trying to go for it again, but this time Taco is going to respect the pressure. Maybe respecting it just a little too much. Yeah, they open Pandora's box a little bit. It's like, oh no, I can't press there. What should I do? Summons oh, no. the ghost, and there it is again, not giving you any room to challenge the ghost summon. A nice catch with that 5v6m pushing towards the corner. The 2v, the grenade OTG is enough. The conversion should be it. And the KO coming through. Taco sitting at set point, threatening to go to grand finals here. 2C round start. And got a full combo off of it too, Jobber. And keeping the pressure on in the corner. Good stuff, but even better poke out from Tega. Gets the crumple too, switching sides. And here we go, ghost party in the corner. Goes for the neutral jump here and the run up throw. Oh, again, just a stiff 5B right there to interrupt the pressure and they're going to go coast to coast. Oh no, tries to get caught with the grab, gets the cross up. That was such a tricky mix up there, Yeja. Every time we have seen that situation, has Taco not gone for the drink, right? This time instead kind of shimmying forward, making Tega second guess himself. Yeah, we've seen so many different layers from that mix-up, you know, he go for that run-up grab, run-up low, run-up helm breaker, run-up roll, and just going for the walk up, I'm going to leisurely jump over you and cross you up, and that is what ended up opening up Tega there. Yeah, just an incredible set there, but that means we have our grand final set now. It should be an absolutely exciting matchup. It's gonna be that run back here mm -hmm. as well for Taco, so let's see if they learn anything on their trek through the loser side of the bracket here going into this rematch. Yeah, I wonder if, um, you know, it's just so tough. I feel like the way Joel was playing with Striker has just been so smart. The spacing is immaculate. Yes, I mean, that is, it is so terrifying to see, right? Just dive kick after dive kick after dive kick putting in the pressure. Yeah, because I feel like the, the tools of, you know, the guard break is scary. Yes. But I feel like the dive kick and having to deal with a lot of the burst movement and the uh, burst damage from Striker is just, it, it is icing on the cake, you know? Yeah. Like, that, that, the guard break is nice, but having a whole kit that almost invalidates a lot of other characters' kits is amazing. And we didn't even get to see the guard break at all mm -hmm. either, right? It wasn't even a factor. We didn't even get remotely close to it where a player got scared and tried to go for a guard cancel or tried to jump and just take the hit, right? Instead, it was all just resetting and pressure, tons of great strike throw, and really good just awareness of where to be and where to place your buttons. Yeah, so I'm hoping there is a, 
I, I want to see a lot of either safe jumps, baited DPs, because I think the best way for Taco to stay in it is to get those 4M punishes with the mine right into the conversion and deleting almost all of Striker's health because she also has incredibly low health. Not as low as maybe Inquisitor, but it is on the lower side. Yeah, for sure here, but we're going to see how Joel is going to be able to keep that pressure up. Of course, that DP is very strong. We've mentioned it so many times, but it doesn't have a vertical hitbox, right? Yeah. That's the main thing. The vertical hitbox is very lacking, meaning that you can jump in on the DP and get a huge punish on Troubleshooter, especially when you have something like a dive kick. Yeah, I've seen so many times where the striker will just jump and then stall out enough time with that dive kick and get a fat counter hit into 5M, into the one-inch punch, and then you lose half your health. Yeah, and Taco is going to need to win two sets to take this, whereas Joel just needs to take one one leisurely stroll through a single set, right, to win this trophy here, win first place, and win that prize pool. And I think it's going to be interesting, you know. Uh, Joel wasn't really willing to play on that mind game of that mind setup, you know, just go running up, rolling forward. And now that we've seen uh, Taco kind of adjust, you know, really just feeling out all of the options the opponent can do, I want to see if the RPS gets even more, like, deeper. Because they know that we know that they know, you know. Yes. That's a very good way to put it. <laughs> the, the layers of the meta is so interesting. In almost any game, especially here at DreamHack, where, you know, FPS games, fighting games, um, RTS, almost every game ever played in existence. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can actually hear it on our mics, but every once in a while, the crowd over there for StarCraft explodes. Mm -hmm. I wish I understood half of what was going on in that game. <laughs> yeah, StarCraft is uh, an incredibly hard game. I don't understand it quite well, but... <laughs> Uh, here we go. You know what I do understand? I do understand the craft of fighting games here, and this is our grand final set now here for DNF Duel at DreamHack Atlanta. Yeah, we will see who will be crowned the DreamHack Atlanta 2022 champion here for DNF Duel. Oh, and the patient. I love that just slight walk. Neither player wanting to overextend, but first blood is going to go to Joel. And this is where things start to get scary. Gonna spend all of the meter possible. Here comes the dive kick. No, instead goes for the empty mid. And the thing is, like, even though Striker is going through exhaustion on almost every combo, they don't really need their MP to pressure people. No, they have that reverse beat, right? Meaning they can, they can start with any of their buttons and just chain into the others. It doesn't matter the order. Ooh, nice. I actually love that, finally. Just going to punish that 2B, knowing that they weren't gonna cancel. Didn't have the MP for it, but there we go. Taco pushing into the corner, gets the mine out. Let's see what they go for. Oh, and there's the guard cancel wants to escape from the corner. Actually beats out the Helmbreaker, which is a little too low. And Taco taken out here in the first round by being pushed all the way to the other corner. Yeah, but Joel has just been so clean all night here. The guard cancel, and again the 2A checking up that run up. Let's see if Taco will get something more here in the corner. There's the drink. Actually, backdash is possibly to try and bait out the DP, but instead what they get is a foot to the face. And then Tatsu getting that corner carry to the DP. Not going for the OTG dive kick here, just going for that jump B, jump A, A, double overhead, triple overhead. Nice, gets the block. They missed the punish. Oh, that was really unfortunate, but there is the 2S. Huge confirm here for Taco, but drops the Helmbreaker. Oh, and the weight here to go for the 2S again, getting shoulder tackled. How many foot dives are we going to see here? Yeah, we'll see. Striker really makes such good use of the dive kick. Oh, and the there it foot is! Foot dive trade! Joel going to take game number one here. Yeah, it is tough. That kind of is the best anti air there for Troubleshooter. But as we've seen, the hitbox is just too good on that dive kick. And the run-up DP immediately canceling into another move. Yeah, I love that frame trap. Again, off that 5M into the 5A. Gets the grab here, trying to catch that jump out with a 5B, but great poke out here from Taco. Taco able to pick up with the 2B. Gonna carry these loops as far as we can. 5A, nice check, no go. Nice patience from Joel. And the, the low crush, it's too powerful. The dive kick, it is just so strong in the hands of Joel. And, you know, 
insult to injury. Troubleshooter has one of the most punishable whiff two ways in existence. Oh, but you want to speak of a punished whiff button there. Joel attempting to get a grab and is going to explode for it. There you go. Oh, right to Awakening. How about this? <laughs> and I love the go. voice acting in this game. Oh, it, it is incredible. Like, there are definitely a lot of iconic lines in DNF DFO, whether Korean or English voices. Oh, the tip of that dive kick. How plus was that? Oh, and there is an answer to beat the dive kick. Go with your own Helm Breaker. Taco starting to make some really strong adaptations here. Ooh, gets the grab this time. Gets a grip of damage there with the explosion too. Nice, the 2S, and there we go. He sniped out the startup of the dive kick, and that was an amazing match there from Taco. The best round so far from Taco we have seen all night. And it was all thanks to that adaptation. The way they figured out to be dive kick here was with the Helmbreaker. Mm -hmm. Oh, just swing it, oh my goodness. I think they were almost double covered from that 5-2-B. Uh, they got punished for it. Here we go, gonna spend as much mana as we possibly can. Joel threatening with those multiple overheads. Oh, the 5-M check, try to go for the tackle, no go. Good guard cancel, oh, the conversion to safe, keep safe, that was so scary. Great DP though coming out from Taco, gonna take a quickie sippy as well. Oh, tries to go for the sword gun right there. Oh, and the conversion forward. There we go, right to Awakening. Immediately into the super, and that is Taco taking yet another round here. Yeah, that I, snowball of momentum is starting to grow larger and larger now, Yejin. I think the plan is coming together. We're seeing a lot more comfort in the neutral, and we're seeing the 2S anti-air a lot of these dive kicks. Oh, but not that one. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Might have been a little bit too slow on the uptake there. This time going to be put into the corner. Joel going for the BNB. Oh, nice tag. Get off of me there. The, the pressure. The DP up. There it was. Ooh, I oh. love the conversion and the 5B on the other side. The conversion is actually what messed it up, though. Taco would have actually gotten the punish, but they converted and put themselves over. Yeah, Stalin out there has to deal with his pressure now. Another DP comes out from Taco. Oh, again, tried to go for the 2S, but unfortunately too close. What a button. What a button, Jason. Taco is like a attempting to stop these dive kicks, but it's just so hard. And Joel gets so much reward for the ones that actually do land. Yeah, huge counter hit starters too. There's the Hellbreaker conversion running up forward. The guard cancel comes out. There it is. There it is. Oh, and that is a big combo with that 2S after that Hellbreaker. Here's the scary part though, Yejin. Joel now gets increased damage while in Awakening. But it's not even going to be a factor there. Closing out the round and putting themselves up 2-1. One. one more away from a reset. Yeah, the range on that grab. Even I was surprised that that reached. <laughs> oh, jumps straight into a 2S anti-air there. And gets a side switch too right back into the corner. Oh, no, the one-inch punch set up. Ooh, I love that delay Helmbreaker there, trying to stop any potential anti-airs from Striker here. Sliding in, goes for the Tatsu this time. Oh, not enough. Nice tech. This DP could be what Taco needs, a trade. Oh, this oh. is huge. You're dead. Oh my god, you are dead. No. Two, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh little, my god. A little bit, oh, look, look, it was almost a little bit too far there, but Taco, nice adjustment. That actually terrified me. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen that drop in tournament, and now Taco is sitting at reset point, Yejin. And we're seeing such good use of the 2S, even though it is a little bit slower, you know, on the startup, we're seeing really smartly placed 2S to snipe out these dive kicks. And there is a very well placed Helmbreaker to snipe out the dive kick as well. Going for the Hellbreaker one more time. Puts the mine out, goes for the setup off that forest, drinking it up. The roll, nice use of the guard button there. 
in a beautiful whip punish with 2B. We have a grand finals reset. Ooh, man, let's see if Taco has enough to take it all the way here. I mean, that has been an exhausting, like, grand finals match there so far. So you got to make sure that that snowball doesn't start to melt, right? It needs to keep building up snow. Yeah, you have to see if they have enough gas. Oh, no. Drop on that dive kick. Confirm. Oh, no. Another 2S starter here, Jobber. I really think the use of the Helm Breaker here so far from Taco has really been the game changer in this matchup. And again, we're running up. Another open up with that 2B. And there we go, OTG. This should be the round for Taco. And Taco is looking unstoppable at the moment. Now it is Joel who is up against the ropes. Not really sure how to challenge these Helm Breakers. Oh my gosh. I love these point black dive kicks. Just kind of. Try to make them go for that 2S. Like, I need you to press this because I want to counter hit. <laughs> There's the DP out immediately into a drink. Oh, we that dive kick interaction. DP on the 5A, drinking up. This next is going to hurt so much. Nice tech, pro tech. That, see, that is such a good option because even if Joel is able to land in time to block, it's still plus. Yep. There we go, the 2S running up, trying to stop these dive kicks. Oh, you tried to get through with the tackle, but that 2B was ready. And Taco getting the first match here in this reset. Like I said, the Asian Taco is starting to look unstoppable now. I don't know what Joel is going to be able to do to really bring this back, because all of Joel's strongest options, Taco's figured out an answer for them. Yeah, I really think that they've really just honed in on that anti dive gameplay and is making Joel have to really take some risks on the approach. Here we go, jumping into the next game. This Rastar situation is always important. And so far, we've actually seen that Taco has been a little bit more hesitant at round start. Oh, there we go. Getting first blood here with that. Gravity just backing off. We're seeing a different kind of playstyle here from Joel. Sending Joel into the corner now, though. And okay, now that Joel has him in the corner, the big thing here is now that Joel isn't being the aggressor. They're putting Striker in the mid range, and that's where Troubleshooter wants you to be. Oh, you're dead. No way. Ooh. Look at that. The damage there from Taco <laughs> off rip. I was not expecting that to kill in any shape or form. And Taco just getting a huge starter once again here. Yeah, I think that, you know, kind of slowing the brakes here on Joel. Again, just look at this patience. Now they have to turn it on. Like that last round, I was too passive. Now I've got to turn it right back on with the aggression there. There we go, gets the counter hit with that dive kick. Going to put Taco into Awakening. This is dangerous. There we go. Safe jump position here. With the grab. Ooh, the DP! And is able to get a counter hit there with the dash punch. Yeah, cleaning it back right up there. Really just kind of mixing up to see what will work here against Taco because I feel like the aggression hey, is just working. It is time to turn it on. Here we go. We're going to spend all of the mana all tapped out. Yeah, and exhaustion. Trying to bait something out here. No go on the DP. Just going for the guard break pressure here. Oh, but the 2B this time going to beat out the dash punch. And Taco once again on the offensive here. Yeah, it's going to ignite the mines one more time. What are you going to go for? The roll. Oh, I love that. Great. They could have easily gone for the throw there. It's a really interesting throw bait setup. No conversion running up with the mines. Careful the Oh and the run up 5A! Yeshin! Taco is threatening to take this tournament. Yeah, I just think that Taco really took that time to kind of break down what was killing them in this matchup. And we're seeing almost every dive getting dealt with and great patience knowing that you can't go for the 2S that close and just opting to block it. Joel immediately, Joel immediately went into just the very next game here. No delay, no breather at all. 
I have to wonder how that's going to pay off. Right now, it's working out. They're getting the pressure on. Oh, nice. Air-to-air -air dive kick, but no go. The DP is good. Push it out. Putting the drink on. There's the conversion. Keep yourself alive. Oh, nice. Frame trap off that 5M. That is a low. DP's going to come out. Will beat out the throw attempt, but run straight into a foot dive. And Joel finally able to get around here. And getting on the board, but it was very hard fought. Gonna have to be a little more tricky there. Nice, gets the whip punish on that 2B. Not a good start here for Joel. There's a the setup with the drink as well. Dark dance out. Oh my goodness, that was so scary, but luckily the conversion inside, but look at the damage off of the 6M. I love the use of just throwing out the net as well as a way of saying, you have to be careful when you approach me. You need to rethink your approach and you need to rethink your entire strategy because Taco is sitting at tournament point. Mm -hmm. All right, tournament point here. Joel's gonna need a little bit more gas. There we go, gets the DP into the cancel. No, the drop off that 5M into the 6M, and there we go, Taco again, leading into the corner with the mind set up. Takes a drink, next hit is gonna convert into a lot of damage. Right, the guard cancel again, good! Stopping with the 5A so far, conversion run up, one more chance here for Joel. Here comes the next mix up, set play is on deck, there's the dive kick, and remember, if you hit troubleshooter, the mines go away. This actually is super dead because they're on Awakening. Into Tackle, into One Inch Punch. It, oh, extending a little bit further. Okay, it's still good. Joel staying in it right now. Ooh. But now Joel's gonna have to make this reverse 3-0 happen. Yep. That's gonna be tough with the way that Taco has been playing. I mean, you know, Joel has adapted pretty well. They've kind of moved away from that dive kick base and only dive kicking like right on top of them. No longer going for more spaced dive kicks. Here we go in the corner. Nice Bloss gets the grab. Just going for the simple pressure here. Again, the DP out through the pressure. There's the drink. Immediately goes for the 5B afterwards. Whoa, throwing up the JB there, knowing that it'll hit to the other side. That was a really interesting idea from Taco. Yeah, but nice instant DP, trying to anti-air that dive kick. Not wanting to deal with this close-up pressure. Again, the DP, nice patience there. Oh, oh no. God. Yeah, wrap it up, you're dead. We're going to tournament, <laughs> tournament point once again here. Out of breath with how crazy this is going. So I actually far. love the fact they went for the Awakening here. They could have easily gone for 5M, Rekka, 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 and that would have been it. But no, you have to go for the Awakening when you can. You get the style points. You got to feel yourself, right? Of course. And here we go. Possible final round once again. Interesting that Joel actually went for the guard cancel there so they didn't have to hold on to the plus frames. Yeah, but nice, getting a huge combo off the rebeat there, catching that 2A, and there we go. Joel keeping the pressure on. And Joel goes for the empty jump throw this time, starting to mix up the approach. Yeah, one, one last chance for this round for Taco. They've been baiting out DP so well earlier in this match. Oh no, not low enough for that DP bait. Oh, but the slide is gonna do it. Joel once again staying alive here. It's getting very tense. Oh, and both of them just jumping forward. There's the throw. But the throw puts us back at neutral, and Taco answers with a 2B. The pick up here. The mines. Going for the check there. Oh, oh the guard cancel with the grenade. Is this enough? It might be enough. He's still keeping it going. He has the MP for it. One more. No, the whip on the 2B, but the 2A will do it. Taco will be your dream hack in the 2022 DNF Duel Champion. A little bit of an American reset there at the end, but that's okay. Still able to close it out and take it. Oh my goodness. What a set. The adaptations from both sides, but Taco to go for the reset and make it all the way back. Whew. Unbelievable.
real there. Edge of your seat DNF gameplay. This game is incredible to watch and to play. I can't get enough of this. It really is amazing to see kind of the variety of characters being played. You know, I did want to see that ghost played, but it's okay. Troubleshooter is an amazing character also. I just want to tell all of you at home also who maybe have, you know, been worried about the meta of this game. Tell me, Yasian. Did you see a Swiftmaster or a Hitman on screen at all? I did not. I did not see a Swiftmaster or a Hitman. Neither did I. And look who just won. Troubleshooter. So this game's meta is definitely in a very healthy place, and it is only going to develop more as the players stick with it, develop it, and as we get that future patch coming up. I cannot wait. Yeah, I cannot wait to see what we get for that patch, but this is it here. That, that was the last match for uh, top four, but we will have this ceremony coming right up. Yeah, the ceremony for top eight coming up, just getting all of our players up on stage. While top four was the only thing streamed, we are going to award all of our top eight players here with a nice trophy. And we're going to have to give this one up as well. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> make sure to grab this trophy off the desk here. Tong! <laughs> <laughs> Tong, help! Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but it has been so amazing. DreamHack has been such an amazing event, and DNF Duel just one part of the overall FGC bubble here. Absolutely, there's still King of Fighters 2 come, and of course, Guilty Gear Strive and Tekken coming up tomorrow as well. Yeah, just, oh, so many fighting games, so little time. It is actually so crazy. This event has been so amazing. Being my first stream hack here, it has been so cool to see the whole production, seeing all the different stages, seeing, like, you know, the magic area, seeing the BYOC area, the free player. I think it's so crazy that you can just come here and play video games. You don't need a PC. Yeah. They have one for you. Exactly. It is an absolutely incredible event, and if you have never been, you owe it to yourself to go to a dream hack event. Of course, dream hack San Diego was just announced, so if you are on the west coast of the United States, make sure you get there. Not only for fighting games, for every single type of game, like Yajin said, every single type of eSport, they are all celebrated here at DreamHack with extra two. We had cosplay contest, dance battle, Ludwig is locked inside of a cell streaming for 50 <laughs> hours. You know, <laughs> there is plenty of things to experience. Yeah, there is definitely something for everyone. I, I honestly think that one of the coolest things was, as you mentioned, that dance battle but we will be handing it off here to the host here, Tong Lee, for our top eight uh, ceremony. All right, congratulations to our top eight for DNF Duel. Coming in at seventh place, Arsenal. In fifth place, Milo Mads! Milo Mads! In fourth place, with the best gamer tag I've ever seen, Hen Tidal Wave! In third place, Everyone's favorite player, Tega. <laughs> Runner up in a very close grand finals. Second place, Joel. And your Dream Hack Atlanta DNF dual champion, Taco. Let's give it up one more time for your champion in all of top eight. And welcome back. Congratulations to all of our top eight contestants. They're putting in the work for an amazing tournament here at DreamHack Atlanta. But it is not over yet, is that right, Yajin? It is not. We have the KOF 15 top four coming soon, so definitely stay tuned. But we'll be taking a break to set up for that, so stay on the channel. <laughs> 